the brand new Subaru Solterra, a pure electric vehicle that shares a mechanical twin, the Toyota BZ4X, which received our prestigious award for worst vehicle of 2023 and probably 2024. However, in this video, we're gonna give this Subaru version a different chance. We're gonna look at the pros and cons and tell you a bit more. Well, what is a Solterra? Well, it's a vehicle that is under license and under contract with Toyota and Subaru. They have collaborative efforts in the automotive space, like the BRZ. And this car is the equivalent for Subaru, like Tom Hanks being under contract with a movie studio to do three different films. And the last one happened to be Madam Web 2. This is Subaru's Madam Web 2. And if you're looking at this, you're gonna have a few questions. Why does it exist? Well, right now it exists to get it as a good lease deal, which we'll talk about during the drive. If you're getting it for a good price, what you're getting is pretty decent packaging on the interior space compared to some commodity cars. This has a Subaru nameplate, but it definitely looks like Toyota everywhere from the infotainment being Toyota connected to its drive functions, its little UI interfaces, the way that you interact with the physical hardware. And the, the Subaru specific things are the safety suite has been rebranded. It's got a Harman Kardon audio system, but basically that's about it. The interior space is largely well laid out, but I would argue in its space, it's not any better than its main competitor, the Ionic 5, which we'll bring up many times in this. The seating surfaces are good. It's rattle free. It feels like a very solid car. The back seat room is pretty good. And of course, the hatch space is very well <laughs> equipped to, get, to carry your cargo. However, this does not have a frunk, which is a huge knock against it. The sunroof or moonroof design, the roof itself does not open, which is also a knock if you want that open air feeling, like it doesn't pop up to let the wind in, but you can see out of it. Basically, Jack's gonna say this, you absolutely, if you're looking at this, you have to shop the competitors for the best lease deal possible uh, before you sign on the dotted line like this, with this, but Jack's gonna head into the shop and he's going to talk about the pros and cons of some of the technology. In the shop with the heart-pounding Subaru Solterra, this has a mechanical twin, the Toyota BZ4X. First off, the Solterra, unlike the BZ4X, only comes as all-wheel drive, as is tradition in Subarus. This has two symmetrical electric motors front and rear on its 400-volt architecture that puts out a whopping 215-ish horsepower and 249 foot-pounds of torque. This bad boy is about 4,300 pounds and has an effective range in the real world of under 200 miles. Though Subaru claims if you turn off, turn off the HVAC and everything is working perfectly and you're in 70 degree heat, you're going to get about 210 to 230 miles of range depending on trim level and wheel size. The other key difference between this and the BZ4X is this has a lift or more ground clearance. This has about 0.2 of an inch extra ground clearance over the BZ4X, which means this has some class leading ground clearance in the EV CUV space. The other thing to bring up as well is this has recalibrated all wheel drive controls compared to the BZ4X. This gets X mode or extreme off road mode, which uh, better controls the electric motors. It allows you to essentially one pedal drive off road. This also has a power and eco function for better throttle response or dull throttle response compared to the BZ4X. And obviously your front and rear fascias are different. Something to bring up as well is the battery setup for charging. They have improved the, the charging from when this was first introduced, but the 10 to 80% charging speed is now about 35 minutes with max charging speeds of 100 kilowatts. Most of its competitors, things like the Ionic 5 or EV6, or even the uh, Model Y charge much faster. That 10 to 80% charging speed for those vehicles is more in line with like say 18 or 19 minutes. So essentially half the time that this thing does. The other thing I will bring up is when you activate the HVAC in this vehicle in colder weather, it saps about 20 to 30 miles of effective range, as you can see, as I did when this thing was charged up to 100%. So there are some issues with this vehicle. It is on ETNGA. Obviously, this is joint with Toyota, which means it's strut front, multi-link rear. As you go up in the higher trim levels, this thing gets 20-inch wheels wrapped with some Bridgestone Taranza EV tires, which are in all season. Those larger diameter wheels, again, affect the overall range of this vehicle. 
So with that, let's go take this for a quick drive with Mark. You really spoiled me, Mark. The last car I drove was a GT3, and I'm in a Subaru Solterra. Oh, you in a oh. Oh man, feel that excel. It's got we more torque even than power a GT3. Mode, 259 foot pounds of torque, oh. 215 horsepower, 4,300 pounds. It's got a mechanical twin that you gave the prestigious award of worst car of 2023 to. So we want to give uh, Subaru a fair, fair shake at this because they didn't make it. So really, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> It's not their fault. Uh, you're gonna blame everybody else. Well, how is this, let's talk about this. How is it different than the other car? I mean, you talked about it in the shop, but how does it drive differently? I, it, I, the suspension calibration, I'm sure is a little different due to the fact that this has more ground clearance and maybe off-road. If you did decide to off-road your, your, Sol, your Solterra, it may handle a little different, but in the real world, they're essentially the same. I'm gonna say this, cause you know, you and I are both down on this thing. As a car to drive, Ignoring range, efficiency, and charging times, this is not a bad vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it doesn't ride bad. Man. It steers halfway decently. You know, it feels like every other mid sized CUV EV thing. Yeah. It's quiet, and it doesn't have a rattly ass CVT or four popper. So if you compare this to like a cross track or an outback, and if you're just pushing down the throttle or not pushing down the throttle, it is more refined than an internal combustion vehicle. So you, you have to basically eliminate the primary reason why you'd be buying a commodity car is the efficiency and all the other stuff and just <laughs> ignore that just for a minute. And it, it does do all those things that you said. And this is the huge argument for electrification in this class of car for the future, right? Like the, this is, it really does a great job. It feels far less like generic and shitty than some of these like cheaper internal combustion four cylinders or three cylinders that just, you know. That Again, looking at this as a lease, right, like right. month to month cost down. Yeah. Uh, you were telling me that, I, I haven't seen the Solterra, Solterra uh, lease rates, but the BZ4X with like a thousand down was under $200 a month. Yeah, and it depends on where you're leasing and what area of the country you are and where the incentives are at. Like right now, it's not gonna apply in a couple of months, but you could get a lease deal depending on where you're at in the country for the low 300s and middle 200s. Now, in our area, it's not as good. It depends on how much the dealer contribution is, but overall, you're gonna get a $7,500 EV tax credit, and then you're gonna get probably $10,000 off from the dealer combined with like whatever manufacturer incentives. That means if you get buy this right, if you're in the $30,000 range, you could get a decent lease price, and that's the only reason you'd Can't buy you this. Can't you say that about every other EV? Uh, not every EV has like good incentives like this, well, but- Well, again, Ionic 5, something you just picked well, up. Well, the EV, the Ionic 5 is a way better deal. I mean, you are getting 24s for under $300 a month, and you're getting real range at 260 to 280. I mean, it just makes this thing, and that becomes the problem with is it. That is that other EVs exist? Exactly. Everything else exists. And when you're dealing with the, the and we're going to get into the reality of this, and it's not a big surprise. This is why this was the worst vehicle of last year, is you're buying this because you need it as a tool to do your daily driving. You absolutely 100% need a charger in the garage, and you're going to have to put it on the charger every other day. Its charge rate is too slow on public charging networks. 100 kilowatts. It, it, and if that, and the charging curve is really poor your usable range, like we're at 80% and you have 133 miles of range. But Mark, if I turn off the HVAC, yeah, I mean, 144. 144. Yeah, so I mean, it, again, like you're you're getting this as that golf cart mentality and you have to be in a very specific area where you're not doing any miles and yet this will be fine. But again, I don't understand why you do it. You can buy something else for the same amount I, of money. Exactly, I, I would rather just go and buy a regular SUV RAV4 and deal with the shittiness of like the, you know, NVH. Or and, a and cross the, track. Yeah, or, you never, yeah, a cross track, exactly. I buy a cross track, I'll never have to worry about the stuff. I'll never have to worry about the first generation battery pack that they just cobbled together here just to say they had an EV. And this is not a Subaru thing. There are, you know, this is a contractual thing with them. But Toyota, you know, they just basically crap this thing out yeah, just to say they could. It's the worst case scenario. E T N E T G N A or yeah. T N G A product. Again, it doesn't drive bad. No, no, exactly. It just, you know, th this is the type of EV that's really hurt the EV industry. Like 
EVs are already having a hard enough time moving off dealer lots and people buying them off not a leased vehicle as well. And this is one of those that is like setting that industry back because this brand did not want to do it. They did not want to do it, and it's clear. You think it's regulations is why they have to sell one of these things? Or uh, not? Yeah, yeah, they, they had to have an EV. So they just churned one up just to say we have an EV. Um, and Toyota is way better than this as a brand to do it, and that's so why they got the worst car yeah. of the year. I mean, Subaru, honestly, you can't blame them. They're, again, they, they had... They didn't make this thing. Right. They didn't make it. They had a contract with with Toyota to have, like, a twin. Because this is the only genuinely bad Subaru product. Yeah. I mean, honestly, the, everything else they make may not be class-leading, but it's not like, why would you buy that thing? Yeah. No, 100%. So if you're a customer and you're looking, and I see this a lot on the forums, like, well, what's wrong with it? You know, like, people are like, well, I, I like it. What's wrong with it? Well, I mean, if you like it, buy it. And if you get a really good deal on it, lease it. And as long as your lease payments are super low and you're not into it, you'll probably like it if you work within the confines of knowing what your actual range problems are going to be. If you can deal with the range problems, which I would just get an Ionic instantly over that because of it, it's a better car. Or an EV6. Yeah, an EV6. Or if, if your dealership, you have a good relationship. Model Y, Model yeah, 3. A, I, yeah. Dude, you can go on and on. If your dealer is going to bury your negative equity or something that you have where you're getting a deal on it, just buy it. But, I mean, that to me, that's not a good enough reason to have no, something you, be stuck with you, three years of this. You absolutely should be driving everything else in this class yeah. and look at the charging curves, the range, and the efficiency. I have driven this thing like an old person in eco mode everywhere. The best I've eked out in like anywhere between 30 to 50 Fahrenheit is 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour. And you only have a 72, 71 kilowatt hour yeah. pack. So you don't have a lot of effective range. It's not right. that efficient. And then on a public charger, it's super slow. It yeah. shouldn't be super slow with the size of this pack. Best case is 35 minutes, 10 yeah, days. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. That, that really does for the size of it. The only positive is because the pack is so small, in home charging, you know, you can get most of your range back in like four to eight hours versus a bigger pack you're there for like 10 to 12 hours no you know, mark so. the only positive of this vehicle is statically i can put 700 pounds on the roof oh that's that's a selling feature <laughs> that's because the roof doesn't open <laughs> it, it's more rigid all right mark so with that let's head into the final thoughts all right final thoughts on the 2024 subaru solterra thanks to our subaru rep aaron for answering some of my technical questions is this a bad car? Honestly, not really. It, it is a fine driving mid-sized CUV. To be fair, most of them are. This thing handles better and is more refined than its internal combustion counterparts from Subaru, like the Crosstrek, Outback, and Forester. This thing doesn't have a rattly four-cylinder paired to a CVT. It has more body rigidity, it is quieter, and it probably handles better, if I'm gonna be honest. Its cons are, in today's world, nearly all of its competitors do the same thing better. They are all more refined than their internal combustion counterparts, and they are largely all more technologically advanced than this Solterra. This Solterra is let down by old battery tech. It does not charge particularly quickly. Most of its competitors do the 10 to 80% charging speed in 18 or 19 minutes versus this doing it over 30. They all have far more range. Most of those cars are knocking the door of 300 miles where in the real world, this is barely breaking 200 miles, and this thing isn't that efficient. You combine that with the fact that this is no cheaper than its competitors, it's in a very, very tough spot. Honestly, in 2025, the only reason you should buy the Solterra is if you get a incredibly cheap lease. Mind you, its competitors also have incredibly cheap leases, so do your homework. So that, thanks for watching, hope to see you again soon.